Okay, so today we are going to talk about how we can use division in order to find your zeros, okay? So before we were given something like this, and you guys would use grouping, right? To find your factors and then to solve for your zeros, correct? Okay, now what if I gave you one of the factors already? We can use synthetic division to figure out what your other factors are. Okay, so let me show you an example. Say we're given this long polynomial here and they tell us that X minus four is one of your answers, okay? It's one of your factors. We're going to do synthetic division. So remember, we do the opposite of this. It would be a four out here. And then we do the coefficients. So the coefficient is a one, a negative five, two, and an eight. And we're gonna do, use synthetic division like we did last unit. So I'm gonna bring down the one and I multiply. Four times one is four. Add these together, you get negative one. Again, multiply. Four times negative one is negative four. And we'll add these together. This will be negative two. Now we're gonna multiply. Four times negative two is negative eight. And eight plus a negative eight is zero. Okay, whenever you do not have a remainder, that means that this is indeed a factor, okay? We're gonna talk about that more later. Okay, so now what I have, remember we go down a degree. So we started off with the cubic, right? The exponent was three. We go down a degree. So this will be x squared minus x minus two. So guys, what we have is our original factor that they told us was a factor in the beginning, this x minus four. That's your linear factor. And we also have x squared minus x minus two. From here, we can find um, the other linear factors. So I need two numbers that'll multiply to negative two, but add to negative one. Yep, negative two and one. So that's what my factors are. This will be x minus two and x plus one. And that's your other linear factor. So this is the linear factor they gave us in the beginning. I use synthetic division to find a quadratic. And then I just factored my quadratic. So that is my cubic function factored so that everything is now linear. Now that I have all of my factors, we're gonna set each one equal to zero and find the zeros. So if I set this equal to zero, what will my solution be? Yep, so this will be a four. I'm gonna put them in order. If I equal this one to zero, I'll get a two. And if I equal this one to zero, I'll get negative one. So those are my zeros. Now, I use synthetic division only because they gave me one of the factors. If they give you one of the factors, you can figure out the other ones through synthetic division. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, so here's one. Let's use synthetic division. They gave you one of the factors. One of the factors is x minus seven. So we're gonna do the opposite and put a seven there. Now we're gonna put the coefficients here. The first coefficient is a one. We're missing a squared, aren't we? Do you guys remember what we put in its spot? Zero. Zero. Next coefficient is negative 37. The constant is negative 84. And we're gonna do long division. Bring down the one. We're gonna multiply. Seven times one is seven. Add these together. Zero plus seven is seven. 7 times 7 is 49. Add these together, what will I get? 12. 7 times 12 is 84. 84. Negative 84 plus 84 is 0. You always want to end with 0 as your remainder. 
if you get a remainder, that means whatever number you tried is not a factor, okay? Okay, so we ended with zero. That's great news. We always go down a degree. So this will be x squared plus x, and that's your constant 12. So this is our factor. The factor that they gave us was x minus 7, and then we have x squared plus 7x plus 12. All right, so I need two numbers that multiply to 12, add to 7. What is that? 4 and 3. 4 and 3. So those are your factors. X minus 7 is the factor they gave you. These are the other ones, X plus 4 and X plus 3. Those are your factors. What will my zeros be? Negative 4, negative 3, 7. Negative 3 and 7. Perfect. Y'all equaled all of these to 0 and solved. And I just put them in order. Okay, what is the multiplicity for all of these? One, there's only one of these, one of these, one of these. So if you were to graph this, I know it's cubic, so it's going to look something like this, right? But let's be a little bit more accurate. I'm going to graph my zeros. So my zero, I have one at negative four. One, two, three, negative four is right there. One at negative three, and I'll say seven is right here. Okay, so the multiplicity is one for all of them. That means I have to go through. Go through it, go through it, go through it. Okay, so that's what your graph would look like. Rough sketch. Okay, I'm going to pause here. You guys, all right, we're on page 12. We're going to talk about roots and the remainder theorem. So the remainder theorem says we have a polynomial and it's divided by x minus c. Then the remainder is f of c. So using synthetic division to evaluate a function is called synthetic substitution. We'll do an example so it all makes sense. Synthetic substitution. Okay, so guys, we're going to use synthetic substitution or called the remainder theorem to evaluate f of x at c. Okay, so basically we're given this long polynomial and I want to know if I plug in a negative 3, what's my answer? Okay, you can either just plug in a negative 3 into all of these x's and figure it out or you can do the remainder theorem. Okay, that's what this theorem is saying. So if we use synthetic division here, I'm going to put all of my coefficients in here. So the coefficient is 1, 8, 12, negative 7, negative 14. If I want to evaluate this function at negative 3, we'll put a negative 3 here. Now we're just going to do synthetic division. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. 8 plus negative 3 is 5. This will become negative 15. This will be a 3. Negative 9. What is this? Negative. Oh. Oh, negative 3. Good. Positive 9. This will be a positive 2. Negative 3 times 2 is a negative 6. And this is a negative 20. No, they gave us c equals negative 3, not c plus 3. If they gave you a factor, then that's when you flip it. Very good question. Mm -hmm. Very good question. Okay, so guys, this is your remainder. So that means if you plug in a negative 3 into the polynomial, your answer would be negative 20. Mm -hmm. So just the remainder will tell you what negative 3 is if you plug it in. That's what the remainder theorem says. Okay, so I'll let you guys finish that page. And I'm just going to do one more. It's also going to be a synthetic division type of problem. Is everyone okay with this? Okay. Let's move on. Go to this one. 
Roots and Factor Theorem. This is page 13. Okay, so, and we already kind of talked about this. Given a polynomial function, f of x, x minus c is a factor if and only if f of c equals zero. Basically, if you do synthetic division and there is no remainder, that means that is a factor. So let me do an example of this. Okay, so I'm going to use synthetic division. The directions say use the factor theorem to determine which binomials are factors. So they gave us three answer choices. We need to evaluate these and see which one is actually a factor. We're going to use synthetic division. So let's set this up. Put the coefficients inside. The coefficient for x cubed is 1. Guys, we're missing an x squared. So what do I put? Zero. Zero. The next one is negative 31. The constant is 30. Now, guys, I'm going to test this first one right here. It's x plus 1. So what do I put over here? Negative 1. Now let's do synthetic division. Negative 1 times 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1. This will be negative 30, positive 30. Did I get remainder zero? No. So that means this is not a factor. X plus one is not a factor. That means negative one is not a zero. Because we had a remainder of 60. If you have a remainder, that means it's not a factor. Let's test this next one. X minus five. So I'm going to put a positive 5 out here. Same coefficients. So 1, 0, negative 31, 30. Bring down the 1. 5 times 1 is 5. This will be a 5. 25, negative 6, negative 30. Oh, do I have a remainder? No. So that means yes. x minus 5 is a factor. Yay, we found a factor. That means this is a factor. Now let's test x plus 6. Use synthetic division. 1, 0, negative 31, and 30. I put a negative 6 here. Negative 6 times 1, negative 6, negative 6, 36, 5, negative 30, 0. Is this a factor? Yes, why? It's zero. Yep, it's zero. There's no remainder. So that means x plus six is a factor. <laughs> All right, so they're just testing to see which is a factor and which is not. All right. All right, guys, let's find some more factors. We can just use long division or synthetic division, can't we? Okay, so let's see. We're gonna put the coefficients here. So this will be a one, three, negative 4, negative 12, you do the opposite. Basically, you solve for x. So if you equal this to 0, you get negative 3. So that's what we put here. You always do the opposite. OK, now you solve. Bring this down, multiply. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. Negative 4 plus 0 is negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 4 is 12. We get a 0. All right. And guys, you always go down a degree. So this will be x squared. This is your x term. 
So that means your factors are x squared minus 4 is one factor, and then the factor that they gave us, which was x plus 3. Okay, so guys, we're going to have to use what we learned the other day, difference of squares. This can be written as x plus 2 and x minus 2. And then this is x plus 3. So guys, we found our factors. And then it says give the zeros. So set all of these equal to 0. Equal it to 0, equal it to 0, equal it to 0. So your x values will be negative 3, negative 2, and 2. And that's it.